So Father's Day this weekend, right? Yeah. And for you, well, you're going to go fishing or something, I'm right? Trying. You're going to try, <laughs> but you're a father yourself. I am. How, how do you think that's going to go when you say, honey, I'm going to go fishing Father's Day weekend? I don't think I'm going to be allowed to get away. <laughs> that's how I think it's going to go. My 10-year-old daughter and my wife are going to collude together and say, no, you're not going anywhere. Yeah. You're going to brunch. Yeah. You throw a jacket on, you're going to brunch. So that's how I think it's going to end. You're, yeah, I, I think you're probably right. But I tell you what, you, you've put together something really special uh, for this Father's Day uh, this Sunday. And you actually sat down with the fathers of Trayvon Martin, and Michael Brown Jr., and Jacob Blake Jr. It's part of a new special for NBC News titled, Can You Hear Us Now, Black Fathers? Uh, so why don't, why don't you just remind everybody, I'm sure most viewers know about it, but just talk about the terrible, tragic connection all these dads share. Yeah, it's, it's hard to imagine. It's been 10 years since Trayvon Martin, um, a 17-year-old boy, was shot and killed in Sanford, Florida. 10 uh, years. 10 years. That is unbelievable. That he, that he would have been 27 years old now is kind of mind-blowing. We see that, yeah. that picture of that young man. Um, all he was armed with was a, a bag of Skittles and an Arizona iced tea, shot and killed by a neighborhood watchman. And then you have, a year and a half later, uh, Michael Brown in Ferguson, Missouri, a scuffle with the police officer. Mm -hmm. The officer says he feared for his life, shot down the street. He laid baking in the sun for four hours, and we know what happened after that. Uh, Jacob Blake in, in um, 2018 um, was, you know, being detained, shot four times in the back by a police officer. Yeah. He is paralyzed. He's still with us. And so this conversation, we think about Father's Day, we think about how much we sacrifice and pour into our children. And part of that is the idea of protecting your children. But what happens when you cannot protect them? And you have cases like these three men who are now part of this club. None of them wanted to be a part of, but they lean on each other as brothers but they also talk about this idea of a certain kind of grief from the actual violence and then right. the violence that happened after that and i do have a piece i'd love to play yeah, it. we can sure. try a piece let's, of it. let's watch we got to take the blinders off at some point right mm -hmm. mike brown they assassinated mike brown's character after he was dead right trayvon martin they assassinated his character after he was dead right and they said it was due to bad parenting, right? But what happens when you got a 17 or 18-year-old white kid going into schools, shooting his peers? It's and you, never said. You ne it's never said that it was due to bad parenting. When that 18-year-old walked into that grocery store in Buffalo, New York, that white boy walked in there and killed those people. It never was a question of how his parents raised him. Never. It, it, that was never, never that, was, that was never a question. They were, uh, why didn't Jacob stop walking? Hell, he didn't have to. Is that a death sentence? I know it bothers all of us at this table. It's just that when the other race do certain things, it's called mental health. But what about ours? Talk about that a little more, if you will, because it's not something that we all talked about so much. Like, for instance, I can't remember a whole lot of conversation after regarding the parenting or whatever. But obviously, because they're so close to it, it's something that they remembered. So they're 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 enduring just a loss that you and I could never Never we, a loss of children. We could. It, it's just impossible to imagine. But then they have to put up, like you said, mm -hmm. with the heartbreak and the tragedy after. You know, Tracy Martin, Trayvon's father, talked about um, when the the trial was was looming of, of George Zimmerman, the man who killed mm -hmm. um, his son, and he ended up being acquitted. That there was a potential juror who said, if only Trayvon would have had a father in his life, maybe he'd be alive. Tracy Martin cut the umbilical cord. You know, yeah. once his, his mother and father, once they divorced, he still st stuck around. He was still a constant present presence in their life. And so the idea of, of, of grappling with, as you say, that, that kind of loss we can never imagine, but then the kind of public perception and the kind of the, the racialized stereotypes around black men and black fathers, right. um, this idea that there's this perpetual absenteeism when so many fathers pour everything they can into the right. children, just like anyone else. Um, 
it, it was really hard, but these guys sat down with me and really had this kind of intimate conversation in a way that we just rarely see. We yeah. rarely have these conversations. So to get these guys together, um, it was a proud moment for me to be able to have this conversation um, for fathers, but black fathers in particular, right. because there's a, a, there are forces that tug at you around every corner. Yeah. So these guys have gone through so much. Uh, it, it looks so powerful. And Gene, you and I have been talking, unfortunately, for way too long about this. Yeah. I know, I know, especially mm-hmm. after Trayvon, uh, we were mm-hmm. talking and you, you were saying, my God, I, you know, I had to take my kids to the side, my boys to the side, sit them down yeah. mm-hmm. and say, listen, this is what you need to do. If you get style, it, 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 the, the things that, you know, I, I'm a father of four and any father, any mother worries about so many things, right? I always tell people, mm-hmm. I've got these four lights going on in my head at all time. And, you know, one, if one's blinking red, everything stops. Well, you multiply that so many times with you, especially as a father of young black men. Uh, mm-hmm. We've talked about this so much. It's so much harder. And it's got to be heartbreaking as a guy who loves your country to have to explain to your boys it's different for you. It's different for us than yeah. it is for Joe's kids. Well, yeah, and what's heartbreaking, Joe, is that this is not, this is not just now. It's generation after generation after generation. I think of, of uh, you know, growing up myself. I think of my yeah. father, my father-in-law, and the, and and what they went through, and the fact that if you're a black man and you uh, encounter authority, police authority or, or self-appointed authority, you are you are considered guilty until proven innocent uh, and you were considered a threat and you were you were considered older than you are for example you were considered a man rather than a than a boy the um, the, the the suspect in the in the buffalo shooting was the white suspect in the buffalo shooting was was often described in newspapers as a teenager uh, a, a teenager that's not how they described Trayvon Martin even though that's what he was I, it's a question for Tremaine did the fathers you spoke with see any hope of breaking this generational pattern that goes back 400 years you know i didn't get that sense uh, gene that the decent felt anything was going to change, uh, but they did feel that, um, you know, as a community, as black men especially, we need to be there for our boys because Superman isn't coming in, the society isn't going to change at all, but that black men need to pull other young men aside and pass down lessons learned, right? Give them some gems that that hopefully uh, will, will bolster their standing in the community. Got to protect ourselves. And that was kind of the enduring message for those guys. Like, even when it's tough, it's not getting any better, but we have to be there for ourselves. Even though we were put in a position where we couldn't protect our boys, we have to find a way to protect the next generation. Yeah, now heartbreaking. Tremaine, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, Tremaine Lee, the full special airs tonight at 1030 Eastern on NBC News Now. Uh, Thanks a lot. Happy Father's Day. Thank you, likewise. And uh, Eugene Robinson, uh, thank you as well. Happy Father's Day.